Game begin. Well, hello, gentle folk. I'm going to get some velocities for some upcoming uh, ARFCOM gel tests. And I'm going to run a camera while I'm doing it for a couple of reasons. One is um, I want to have a backup so that I know that I'm getting each velocity for sure. The other reason is I want to share it with you. And the third reason is I'm going to use one of these lab radars for the first time and see how it works out. And you can come along with me on that journey, as it were. Come with me and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. Hopefully, this is going to be a boring, nerdy, Nerd! data-filled video with just lots of numbers and routine shit. But um, there's a fair chance that I may have to fight with this thing. I don't know. Last night I was trying to set up the uh, Bluetooth on it and it was uh, not working. I tried it with my Motorola phone, Android obviously, and my uh, an iPad <laughs> and it just wouldn't connect with either one of them. The, the Motorola would pair on Bluetooth but it would produce a connection error in the LabRadar app and the iPad just wouldn't even connect on Bluetooth. So all I can do with it is to store velocities on the SD card, which is pretty disappointing. Um, obviously, I still need to call the company and figure out what the problem is, but you know, it was too late to call them last night and I needed to get out here and get this stuff done today. So I'll have to call them later and then I can tell you how that worked out and if I was ever able to, to get the Bluetooth working. But um, let's get this show on the road. We're gonna start with some American ammo for a trash can gun. We'll be shooting this uh, Winchester Deer Season XP, which is a 123 grain extreme point. And uh, let's see how it works out. Uh oh, my banana clip isn't working. Oh, uh. -oh. Oh, just not quite. All right, let's get these in a different magazine. This US Palm banana magazine didn't fit my Wasser 1063, but if I had to blame one part or the other, I think I'd blame the Wasser. Okay, Winchester deer season, 123 grain, extreme point. All right, so we gotta push this button to wake it up, to make it trigger. Come on, there we go. So it should be armed now, I believe. Did I charge it? Nope. Anything? I can't see it. Nothing. It didn't detect the shot. Okay. Well, let's figure out why it's not detecting the shot. So it has two different ways it can trigger. One of them is by sound. And since it's really quiet out here, why can't... No, we're, we're not doing anything. Yeah, no shit. No kidding, you couldn't track the projectile. It's not giving me a menu or anything. It's just locked up. Okay, I'll turn it off and on again. Let's set the trigger level. I had it at medium. I'm gonna set it down to level one, which should be the the lightest. Okay, so, so this is going to be series 0001. We'll grab one more round out of this box so we get a five round average if, uh, if we can get this thing working. 
Okay. Armed. There we go. Two, three, five, seven is the, the, the zero mark. And what's neat about this is it gives you velocities further down range because it's using velo uh, uh, radar to measure the velocities. So that would be V zero is two, three, five, seven. And then V 11. That's odd. It goes 11, 22, 33, 44, 55. I need to set those distances. But I think that's yards. So V11, 23, 24, V22, 2291, V33, 2260, V44, 2228, V55, 2197. Let's crank off a couple more. Two, three, six, four. Two, three, six, five. Two, three, six, two. Two, three, six, four. I think that was the last one. Indeed. Now I want to start a new series. So I push this button here. Okay, yeah, I know it couldn't track the projectile because there isn't one. Come on. No, I just, just, that's why. I just then I can. Come on. I don't care about any of that stuff. I just want to start a new series. Okay, how do I start? This thing's already pissing me off. Okay, so off and on again. I also don't like that like just pushing the power button turns it off or turns it on. And maybe that sounds stupid, but think about this. If it's sitting in the case, do I want it to come on because the power button got bumped or do I want, to, want it to come on because the power bu button got held for three seconds or so? I mean, I'd prefer it's not even a power button. I'd prefer it's a big clunky slidey switch thing to turn on and off but okay so now I can create a new series so yes yeah I want to create a new series and because Bluetooth isn't working I can't name the series or anything it's just series two okay well all right I guess I guess we're ready I think okay Orange light's on, it should be ready to trigger. Um, this time we're gonna be shooting Lake City M193. Mm, a little sluggish. Three, three, six, nine. Uh, V11 is 3327, V22, 3285, V33, 3244, V44, 3203, V55, 3162. I know I'm wearing a lapel mic, so it probably sounds like I'm yelling to you guys because I still got the ears in. Sorry. Three, four, four, five. Three, four, two, nine. Three, two, five, four. Three, four, six, four. Got my piece through superior firepower sticker. Peace pot and microdot. Gonna do Winchester 64 grain power core. Two two five nine. 
V11 is 2220, V22, 2180, V33, 2142, V44, 2244 2246 2229 Today, Junior. Now we're going to do Arms Core 62 grain uh, pointed soft point, I think. Yeah. 62 grain PSP. Two five seven nine, V eleven is two five three seven, V twenty two is two four nine five, V thirty three is two four five four, V forty four is two four one four, V fifty five is two three seven four. Two five nine six. 2486, 2512, 2510. And series 5 will be um, spear gold dot, 62 grain. Look at the end of the box. There's a lot number. And go. Two three eight one, V eleven is two three four five, V twenty two two three zero eight, V thirty three two two seven three, V forty four two two three nine, V fifty five two two zero two. All right. Oops, I had it in binary. <laughs> Sorry. 2424 2388 Grab one more round so we can have a five round average. 2414. This was donated by Michael Taylor, uh, an attorney around town around here in the Phoenix area. It's Atomic Tactical Cycling Subsonic. It's a 112 grain round nose soft point. We're going to be gel testing that. Oh, okay. It produced an error. Said it can't track the projectile. I forgot. You have to tell this what velocity range to expect. That's subsonic. So I had it in the rifle velocity range. And I was kind of curious whether it could pick up um, projectiles in another velocity range. And apparently the answer is no. So I'm going to put that in the handgun velocity range. So handgun is, I want to say, 600 to 1,500 feet per second. And then rifle is 1,500 to 4,000 feet per second or so. But what I want to know is what happens if I have something that's right at the edge? It's 1,500 feet per second. Which one do I pick? And will it be able to 
capture it if it's right on that line. Who knows? Um, select velocity range, handgun, yep, okay. Now back to that. And yes, do that, okay. All right, should be ready now. Let's try this again. Nine hundred twelve out of the ten and a half inch barrel. Uh, v eleven is eight seventy. V twenty two is eight twenty seven. V thirty three seven seven seven. V fourteen seven seventeen. V fifty five seven seventeen. Eighty eight. So. 882-1039. That one was a bit warmer, wasn't it? All right, and as you see, it did cycle all of those rounds and it did lock the bolt back on the last round. That's cool. Still gonna be this uh, 112 grain tactical cycling, but this time we're gonna shoot it through a 20 inch one and seven twist. We're gonna see if it get, gets much faster. Should be quite a bit quieter anyway. Ah, oh, you stupid. I didn't arm it. Only two rounds left. Seven twenty-three, so it's slower from the longer barrel. That's not surprising. V eleven seven twenty-three. That's some weird numbers. V forty-four seven sixteen, and then it just didn't get twenty-two or thirty-three yards. Oh, and it missed that one. Okay, well, as you can see, it was cycling, and it did lock the bolt on the last round out of the 20 inch as well, even with the longer gas system. Okay, this one's a little bonus. We actually did not gel test this, but I, I'm curious as to the velocity, and maybe we will gel test it in the future, so it'll be useful to have that data. This is a Pervy Partisan M193, or M193 clone. I, guess if it's never been issued, it's not really M193, but it's made to M193 spec. Um, is there a date on it? As we're getting old, I can't tell. Yeah. It's uh, 08, which is the year I bought it. So first we're going to test it from a 20 inch. is a little dry, that's what she said. And I'm gonna remember to arm it this time. Three, two, five, five. V11 is 3211, V22, 3166, V33, 3125. V44, 3084, V55, 3040. Huh. All right, let's get some more. 3240. 3279-3255-3289. Okay, same, same, pervy partisan M193, but from a 10 and a half inch barrel. 2669, V11 
V11-2632, V22-2593, V33-2557, V44-2521, V55-2484. Two seven eight two, two six eight one, two seven two one, two seven two five. So this is going to be Fioki one eighty grain jacketed hollow point, as you can see there. There's the end of the box. This was graciously donated by Minuteman Ammunition out of Carson, Washington. There's their card. Thank you for sending me the ammo. Their phone number is 503-545-2705. Their website is MinutemanAmmo.com and you can email them at MinutemanAmmo at gmail.com. Thanks for the ammo, guys. He didn't ask for a shout out or anything, but I figure that's the least I can do for donating the pews. Okay, so this is gonna be Fioki 180 grain jacketed hollow point from a G20. And that's gonna be series 10. One one six two. We got V eleven is eleven thirty four. V twenty two eleven oh eight. V thirty three ten eighty six. V forty four ten sixty nine. And it didn't get a V fifty five because I aimed at a target that was a little bit closer. Let me aim a little bit further out. Eleven fifty three at the muzzle, V eleven, eleven twenty eight, V twenty two, eleven oh two, V thirty three, ten eighty one, V forty four, ten sixty five, V fifty five, ten fifty. One one three six, and the V fifty five is one zero four four. One one three nine, and the V fifty five is one zero four four, and we've only got four rounds for each. This is going to be the same ammo, but fired from the TNW Arrow Survival Pistol, and uh, you know I only had eight rounds left after. The reason I'm doing all this is when we did the gel testing. Um, the Caldwell G2 that I had started, it was producing all kinds of weird velocities and I used up a fair amount of ammo trying to chase that around and figure it out. Got down to eight rounds, we decided to put a fork in it, got a different um, chronograph or I don't think you even call it a chronograph anymore when it uses radar. So anyway, got four rounds left the TNW survival carby or pistol or whatever this thing is. I got it. And it's really not that fast. It's 1264 from this thing. So we got V11, 1236 at 22 yards, 1207, 33 yards, 1178, 44 yards, 11.52, and 55 yards, 11 11.25. 12.80. 12.64. 12.75. And I think that was it. Indeed. Okie dokie. This is going to be Magtech 9mm 
a 95 grain jacketed soft point. And I'll be shooting it from a Glock Model 22 with a Lone Wolf 9mm conversion barrel. Looks thusly. I like when I put in the description that I'll be shooting this 9mm cartridge from my Glock Model 22. And of course, it's almost always some somebody to chime in and say, Well, Glock 22 is a 40 caliber. How are you shooting 9mm out of it? Thusly. Okay, let's uh, arm. Thirteen seventy eight. That sucker's moving. All right, so at eleven yards, thirteen twenty five, twenty two yards, twelve seventy, thirty three yards, twelve nineteen, forty four yards, eleven seventy, fifty five yards, eleven twenty four. Twelve eighty seven. Thirteen seventy seven. 1389. Oh, it didn't extract it. Huh. Here's that nine millimeter conversion for you. Thirteen sixty. Got another question I want to answer. So you noticed that pause between each shot. That's not just me trying to be able to read the screen or something like that. That's it. Uh, it takes a little while to calculate and display or or something. I don't know because. It's not displaying the numbers immediately like on the chronographs that I've used. It has to think about it. And that means, so with the Caldwell G2, when it was working correctly, <laughs> um, you could connect a Bluetooth and you, sh you can shoot a string and, you know, it's going to report every velocity to the Bluetooth and, it, and it's instant. And uh, you could just shoot at whatever comfortable pace you wanted to, and it would pick up all the shots. So I'm gonna fire three shots rapid fire here and see if it catches them. And then I'm gonna fire three shots at just a kind of a, a medium pace and see if it catches those. And I really don't know how many rounds I put in this mag. Yeah, that's counted as shot one. This is series 13, by the way, and still Magtech 9 millimeter, 95 grain J JSP. Oh. I don't know how well you can see that. Let's angle this toward the camera and the sun without pointing it at my own face. But there's a, there's a fired case in there. I guess every now and then the, oh, the extractor's a little. So I've had this happen with Glocks in the past where the extractor gets a little sticky. Right, so I don't know how well you can see this, but if I push this extractor out, it kind of stays out. So it's got some kind of, and I, yeah, there's, there's something sticking there, something caught maybe. Could be a little chunk of brass or lead or something. In any case, I need to take this 
detail strip this and clean out the extractor and all that, any gun can fail. Glock fanboys and AK fanboys are famous, but lots of other fanboys will talk about how their chosen gun just can never fail. It can, it will. This gun's been through so much crap. Crawl through a river of shit and came out clean on the other side. And I haven't detail stripped it in like forever. Um, I thought initially that it's just because the nine millimeter case head is a little shorter or, or a little narrower so the extractor wasn't getting a good grip on it, but no, it's, the extractor's just wonky. Let me get these last few rounds off here and see if this can grab them. Yeah, it's, we're done. Crank off three real quick. I think I'll do a binary. Yep, and it still says shot one. Two, seven, four, five, if you care. Shot two, two, seven, oh, two. I'm gonna try just a medium pace. Okay, so it got two of those because now it's up to shot four. But you definitely have to wait for each velocity to display for it to get the next one. That was 2751, if you care. And so I put some cheap Walgreens um, alkaline batteries in it. And so far, it's doing okay. It lost one bar on the battery to begin with. But that was like five or 10 minutes into using it. So I'm not surprised. I mean, uh, depending on how you calculate the capacity of the battery that's not that's not exactly shocking um, because you're not 100% anymore but over this whole time it has stayed with only that one bar so I think it's three out of four bars is still left so the battery life is not terrible um, I wish that it had uh, an internal lithium-ion rechargeable battery I guess, you know, I could use rechargeable double A's and it does have a USB port to, um, to accept external power. So that could come in useful someday. But, you know, there's just a lot of things about it that are suboptimal, I think. Let me get this a little bit closer so you can see the display. I'll crank it down to here, reasonable height, and maybe turn a little bit so you can view it better. But the, the buttons are these rubbery, mushy things that are on so many things nowadays. I'm not super thrilled about that style of button, but you know, that's kind of a personal preference and it's really common nowadays, so you know, Get used to it, Boomer. Um, my initial impression of this thing so far is it's really cool, a neat idea. I like that I don't have to set it down range and worry about like maybe hitting it or the screens or something as I'm shooting. Although if you focus when you're, <laughs> when you're shooting over a traditional chronograph, it's not that big of a risk. I don't like that the Bluetooth just didn't work at all. I don't like that I have to shoot pretty slow. I don't like that there's no way for me to name the series for, for later. The only, the only way is either make a, make a handwritten note or run a video camera and then correlate, okay, what series one? Oh, it was this load, which, you know, that's a pain in the ass. And 
the Bluetooth would resolve that because I could use my voice to dictate what I'm shooting and make the whole process go very smoothly and quickly. It got the data I wanted. The velocities that it was producing seemed reasonable, seemed in the right range. I don't have any reason to expect that it's not accurate. I like this thing. It's expensive. And for that price, I feel like they should have got the details right. But this is my first time out with it. First time playing around with it. I need to call the manufacturer and find out if I'm doing something wrong with the, with the Bluetooth connection and all that. By the way, even if that is the case, even if I am getting something wrong, it's still a little bit of a failure on their part that they didn't make that very clear in the instructions because I did read the instruction booklet. I did some Googling to find out, you know, if there was a, a problem, that if that was the case, their, their, their website should have come, they should have engaged in proper SEO to make sure their website comes up when people ask that question and all that. So I can't give them too much slack on that either. Even if it, even it was a mistake I made, they haven't really, there wasn't a lot out there to correct that mistake. I think that's about it. That's all I have to say about that. For initial impressions, I may, if I'm not too lazy, I may put together an actual review for my channel. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the Velocity Nerd stuff. I love you.